Welcome back. The movie begins when a girl, Ever, is packing some eatables for her field trip. Her mother arrives and tells her not to indulge in bad activities, but to try to involve herself in positive activities when she spends her time in high school. Her friend, Tamara, arrives, and she feels odd to see the way Ever is dressed up. She gets her in the car and tells her, you need to expose your skin a bit to show others. Ever unzips her jacket a bit, and she is teased with the name, Stevens. Suddenly, their car bumps into a guy, Randall, who carries a load on a bicycle. It does not take him too long for him to be thrown a glass of drink by another group of friends just for the sake of fun. In the next scene, the principal of the high school collects the mobile from the students and places it in the bag before sitting on the bus. Ever, however, does not have any. All the students begin to crack jokes on the bus. Right after, the principal announces that we will be going through some adventurous routes, so all the students have to be aware of it. He has shown mixed emotions in a way that makes students scared. The journey begins, and the driver, Wayne, sets off for a field trip. The principal notices Wayne is taking a wrong turn. All of a sudden, the windscreen is filled with blood, and everybody gets frightened. The driver loses control and falls right into the middle of the forest. The condition of the students becomes severe and frightening. Next, the principal inquires about everyone's health and finds JC suffers the most. Suddenly, they hear some movement on the bus roof. The situation turns from bad to worse when the civil defense operator tells everyone through radio to keep their safety belongings with them as they are in a risky area and a state of danger. Someone strikes the window where Ever is sitting and leaves a handprint fills with blood. Nobody knows so far what is going on. Henceforth, someone knocks on the door of the bus. Students do not want to open, but the principal negates them and opens it. The principal is going to exchange words with him until he is ripped off his neck. Everyone tries to get out now, and someone could not manage to move out. Ever tries hard to save Candace, who rolls all inside on the floor, but the monster catches him too. However, those who get away start finding solutions how to get away with this. They run toward the building where one of the students, Danny, slips over the horse Dead's body. It brings more scare to everyone. Later, they walk through a forest and have been hearing horrific noises. They get together to find a solution. Danny, one of the students, however, keeps on disagreeing with whatever is discussed. JC takes him to a confidence level to agree with what is being discussed. Afterward, they reach a room where they find sculptures and wall painting art. They decide to find the stuff for the preventive measures that makes them alert and attack. Thus, they decide to kill the monsters. During so, Jump Street asks about those who were left behind on the bus. Danny is hit by a falling wooden and bleeds. JC comes out there to see Danny's condition. After observing all around a lot, Ever finds this place weird. Later, Ever and Layton discusses how high school is different for people, but Randall opposes the idea that people never change no matter what. They all get together at a place where they all become very happy seeing each other and that they have found something for protection. Suddenly, they hear a horrific sound again. All of them get alert, and they hear a voice of a girl asking for help. Therefore, Ever sees through the wooden fence and sees Candace asking for help. Ever decides to leave, but Randall stops her, as they all have a sense that the monster trying to get closer to where all of them are hiding. Ever decides to help her however rest of the team denies the idea of helping her declaring they could bring their lives in trouble. Even Tamara who stays with Ever most of the time ignores the idea. Candace continues calling for help and everyone senses the monster is getting closer to Candace. The monster is about to attack Candace when Ever impatiently opens the wooden fence. Candace tries to reach her, but the monster catches her and starts beating her. No one could ever do anything and here Ever goes to another side if she could save. But she finds there another monster, Driver Wayne, and they both get inside now. All of them are shrieking trying to save the lives each other. They all get to a room and close the door with the help of a wooden bar. They take a sigh of relief and after a few moments a person appears and all start screaming again, thinking there might be those monsters again, but luckily it is Ryan, their fellow. They all are surprised how Ryan managed to save his life. Ryan explains how everything happened before him. There were killings, streaming blood everywhere of their fellows who could not manage to get out of the bus and he does not think any of them has made it except Candace who made it that far but got killed ultimately. They all start assuming those creatures can be zombies but as usual, Danny denies the idea there cannot be such a thing. 
The next moment, the monster arrives and they are all trapped. This time around monsters arrive in numbers including those who were their fellows on the bus, they are converted too. They begin to find a way and hunt the jump street, starts beating the monsters so that the rest could find a way to escape. Danny finds it a bit injustice and rushes to Hunt to fight with him. They kill a couple of monsters but unfortunately, Hunt gets caught. He asks for help from Danny, who is going to pick him up but the monster from the other side drag Hunt and Danny becomes helpless as he could not do anything right there. In the next scene, all of them escape and Danny is regretting not saving the life of Hunt. He loses his emotions and starts fighting with ever telling them they all turned out to be selfish for saving your life than Hunt. They all see the dummies around them sensing they want us for their feed. Meanwhile, Wayne, the bus driver who turned into the monster gets in and tries killing but Randall beats him plenty of times with a rod. Everyone pays thanks to Randall and Tamra is significantly impressed. Now then, Danny is still furious with himself for not saving Hunt, and many notice his behavior is getting different. He tells that he gets stabbed by the monsters which ultimately leads to the fact that he can be converted too. Suddenly, a zombie arrives and rushes toward everyone, but manages to fall Danny from a building and dies. Later everyone notices Danny wakes up and behaves like a zombie. There are many like Danny who are turned into zombies and that's what Randall tries to reveal to everyone. Ever decides to take risks now and try to get their phones from the bus. Randall is against this idea, as he thinks we all can get killed, but this Ever is not listening to anyone. Ever fires up one of the zombies' buses so that they can distract them and gets to the bus to get phones. Tamara tries to stop Ever from taking that risk, but she ignores her rudely. This time only Steven manages to go with her. As soon as they get to the bus, Ever takes out the phones but those phones are broken. All of her efforts went in vain. Ever starts cursing herself, telling Stevens I could not even justify myself all the time. Everything she tries to do something good, things turn out to be positive. She believes no one likes me the way I dress or append my life. No one feels like accepting me the way I am. Speaking to Stevens, he keeps motivating her in the meantime. However, Ever sees the radio signals and tries to access the defense system, and she could not be able to do so. She puts on the cassette and discovers the recording of the words from the defense system. She comes to know it was a pre-planned and shockingly a twist in the tale happens when Stevens injects her on the back so that she could forget everything and Randall joins him. The story flashes to five weeks before when Randall and Steven were planning to change the whole thing the way they want so that they could avoid any humiliation. Since Danny and Hunt are hard to beat, they try experimenting on Ever and Tamara. It is all going to happen with the help of a drug that can make someone do whatever one wishes for and can create a zombie. The guy, Chip, was the one who bit the face of Principal Lorenzo and is told by Randall to subdue him instead biting the face. They took Wayne into all this because he has been desperate to beat the principal as he believes the principal remained unkind to him. Randall, however, is devastated by Chip's plans as he did not want any attack for killing Wayne and Chip replies that's because he overdosed it and extreme of anything turns out to be bad. As the drug will lose its effect, they don't remember a thing, and Ever will be one of those. The Chip further says in case of any confusion, he has a backup plan and a plan to inject so that all the human ignores the error. In this way, he would be able to overcome his miseries and the sadness he got from the number of faces in the high school. Next, Randall makes out a plan with Stevens to inject all those who they have drugged and make Tamara and company kill them thus we all will be responsible in case of any bad happening. Both Stevens and Randall reach out to the cage, injected Danny and Hunt, and decide they will make them beat Tamara and company. On the other hand, Ever struggles to thrash Chip at first, but her principal reminds her of what her mother said to her, take out the positives. She gathers courage and beats Chip. Next, Tamara meets Randall, who explains that Ever is no more and what they have to do as soon as Stevens opens the cage. He handovers the beating material to everyone, and at the same time Ever tries to reach the place. As soon as Stevens opens the cage, Ever comes in the middle to stop them from beating. Randall, however, provokes the company that Ever might be affected it's better to kill her too. Ever convinces Tamara that we have been drugged, injected, and in this way, she smashes Randall and Stevens and is given to the prisoners as a punishment. Afterward, everyone comes to know what Randall and Stevens have been trying to accomplish and starts beating them. Ever gets the final shot and smashes Randall. 
After a few moments, Randall screams and intends to kill everyone. All the girls who he had tried to trap take full advantage of and beat him black and blue. Ryan takes a massive part in beating and ever finishes the things off. After a couple of hours, everyone is packing up to leave for home. Danny and Ryan become friends, the two who have been fighting over small issues and who try to consider themselves superior to others. Hunt is surprised to witness all this too. Likewise, it enables strangers to become an acquaintance. Here, Tamara speaks with one of the persons asking who he is. He does not reply in the way Tamara wants but instead tells he was on the wrong bus. Eventually, Ever now narrates about her friendship with Tamara and they start asking about what they have learned from each other. Tamara wants Ever to start things off. Ever shares that it is because she never had that kind of experience before and she comes out of her real identity to kill someone. Ever tells Tamara what her mother used to say to her. She used to say that my life will begin when I get out of high school. As long as I am staying in my comfort zone, I will not be able to assess myself. I should not even think about which group of people is going to accept us or reject us. If any group considers us as their own, we feel so ecstatic and lucky with that. Tamara understands all that Ever is trying to say and they both hug each other warmly. Lastly, Ever handovers the mask to Chip which he used to use for killing and all the fellow teens get into the bus and take their seats. Suddenly, an odd noise comes and everyone starts screaming. It is Principal Lorenzo who wakes up and the movie ends here. Thanks for watching.